You are in for a real treat this afternoon. I am blessed to be able to welcome blessed. Ruby Wax to the Virtual Futures stage at FutureFest 2018. Uh, my name is Luke Robert Mason, and for those of you who don't know, the Virtual Futures Conference first occurred at the University of Warwick in the mid-90s. Now, it arose at a tipping point in the technologization of first world cultures. And whilst it was most often portrayed as a techno-positivist festival of accelerationism towards a post-human future, the Glastonbury of cyberculture, as The Guardian put it, is actual aim hidden behind the brush steel, the silicon, the jargon, the designer drugs and the charismatic prophets was much more sober and much more urgent. What Virtual Futures did, or at least tried to do, was cast a critical eye over the phenomenal changes in how humans and non-humans engage with emerging scientific theory and technological development. Discussions like this continue the conference's aim to bury the 20th century and begin work on the 21st. So, let's begin. At this stage, Ruby Wax needs no introduction because you've seen her face splashed across all of the Future Fest marketing. She is a modern polymath and author of the new book, How to Be Human. But on this stage, we're going to talk about the future human, Ruby. And, and your book really lists off all the possible human upgrades as if it was like the, the human enhancement shopping channel. So which one are you most excited about, Ruby? I'm most excited that someday a drone will be able to come into my bedroom while I'm sleeping and shave my legs. That's, that's what I'm, that's, that's my dream. That's, that's about, maybe throw in a virtual Brazilian. Uh, a virtual, a virtual a VB. I'm not asking a, a lot. A VB ordered by Amazon. And Je Jeff, Jeff Bezos is gonna have some interesting data <laughs> based on <laughs> this. <laughs> Off it goes. Yeah. A Brazilian by Amazon, I, I, I understand. So look, Ruby, the book does focus on a couple of things, and the first one is gene editing. Now, are you to a degree excited about the idea of genetically modified human well, beings? Well, th that's not really what the book is about. The book is about, first of all, what it is to be human. And that's way more, you know, you have to lead up to that and to say, you know, before robots give, you know, put our heads in uh, little, little balls, snow globes and give it to each other for Christmas. Was there something about us that we should hold on to? You know, because I don't, uh, some of my teeth aren't mine. Guess which ones? <laughs> it's a new game show. And then I have screws in my toes from uh -huh. bunion surgery. I didn't really need it, but my mother, when I was 18, decided just to go for it with a hammer. But she said I had bunions. So I had screws put in. So now I wouldn't be standing if I didn't have them, but I'm still intrinsically me. So where's the part, you know, where's the one bit will you give away where the deal isn't fair? So that's the whole book investigates. A, what's, what's the interesting bit? B, what are we underusing? C, what did evol, can I say fuck? Uh, no. Not a Queen's right. but for us, you No, can... it's okay. Evolution <laughs> didn't do us a lot of favors. And right. it... Favors was the F word you wanted to use. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that all right. Was, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it did wonderful things. I mean, we're standing, we have thumbs for some reason that can move, you know, I guess for building tools, uh -huh. which was, uh, you know, people always go, oh God, all this technology, but we never were equipped with sharp teeth or claws. So we got, honestly, Evolution gave us hands so that we could make extensions of ourselves. So first it was, you know, the wooden spear, then it was the nuclear spear, and now, you know, your iPhone is the extension of you. So what, what are we bitching about? It's, we, anyway, I've gone off piece. But um, the bit where we give too much away is what we have to figure out, and what this brain is capable of doing right now that we're not using it for. I mean, we can upgrade this machine just as much as we can everything else, but nobody ever concentrated on it. It's a, a remarkable thing. We're so brilliant, you know, able to put bunny ears on you, you know, on an app. But I how- I genetically. I thought yeah, you were about genetic enhancement. No, I'm going off genetics. Uh -huh. I'm just saying, and then, but how we m move our own brains and self-regulate and by epigenetics before you even get into the technology, which should be common language, much more than what's your star sign, is that by certain, exercises and certain ways of thinking, we can not just change our genes, but the genes we pass on. So if we think we're dumb about technology, we're even dumber about ourselves. Well, Ruby, with your, with your uh, metal in your feet and, and your, your new teeth, do you consider yourself a cyborg? Well, clearly it is. You know, so what's the extent? 
and how much do you want to have? If I'm dying, I want your heart, you know? If, uh, Sorry, that wasn't in the contract. Uh, I didn't but you know what I mean? What do you need? And then where's the bit? And it's not for me to say I don't pass judgment. You know, why would I know what your reality is? I don't. So where's the bit which will just like get your rocks off rather than saving your life? And it's not for me to judge on that one. Well, you asked the question, you know, how to be human and you asked the question of what it means to be human. I mean, how much of ourselves would we need to replace before we stop becoming But which human? bit is human? And that asks the, always the question, what's consciousness? That, what, that's what I mean. Had we been focused on this for the four billion years we've been existing, maybe we would have known that, you know? Because everything can be improved. We don't want it to fall apart. Give me, bring on the new knees. Bring on, you know, the new face. I don't care if I've an, I'm an avatar of a lobster, if that's what I get off on. But the bit that's compassionate or the bit that makes me feel good when he looks at me and nothing ever will, you know, be able to duplicate that online then maybe that's a bit, that chunk of wherever that is in the brain I should still have. But how I look, I don't care. Well, how you look, you don't care. In that case, how about the new brain? How about how you think? Well, what, what would the, so some of the neuro enhancements, perhaps, that you, Ruby Wax, would, would really desire? I'd like to be, well, here's the thing. You can get a kid that's smart from too smart, you know, let's say, uh -huh. but then they're always going to be really screwed up on another level. You know, I'm working with a neuroscientist on, and a monk on my new book. That's who helped write it. Now, the neuroscientist, anything you want to know, he's as, almost as fast as Wikipedia. But he does not understand what clothes to wear. Uh -huh. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he has no taste at all. And that's true. Any speaker with doctor before their name on the Future Fest stage Done. is very obvious. Just, yeah. it won't match. It won't matter, and it's offensive. You know, you don't bring polyester into a room because if somebody <laughs> smokes, you've got an incident. Uh -huh. But also, <laughs> but also, he he lacks certain emotional, you know, uh, instincts. So if you give, let's say, you you know, uh, CRISPR it or whatever, and you make yourself a very high IQ baby, uh -huh. how, what's the chances that he doesn't slip up in something else? With all the people you interview in your book... And so what would I want enhanced? That's the question. Uh -huh. Well, it feels like a lot of the folks you mentioned, whether it's Ray Kurzweil or some of those folks who are obsessed with upgrading the brain, all they want to upgrade is intelligence. They think intelligence is the most important thing. That's the thing that How makes us human. How many intelligent people do you know that are happy? Uh, if they were, I'm buying it. Uh, you know, but show, show me what... First of all, they, it doesn't show, so maybe somewhere in their organs they're smiling. But B... <laughs> Aside from the money, and aside from sometimes I think if somebody's a real genius, they can get into flow easily, mm -hmm. but they usually don't have a great life. So, you know, there's a lot of questions to be asked before I give this up and say, okay, bump it up. Because we only have so much bandwidth. So if I'm so brilliant and I get fixed on something, which is what brilliant people do, what am I missing? That's the question. What am I missing? And I guess that's what I'm saying with you know, giving it away to technology, what am I going to miss? And what do you potentially have to gain? Because it, it, it's not necessarily just about enhancement. Your friend, Neil Halbisson, has created a whole new sense for himself. Yeah, but he had to. It was an emergency. Uh -huh. He can't see in color. So, he, you know, it's like I'm, I have depression. I have to take antidepressants. I wouldn't say do that for your holiday. It normalizes him. Uh -huh. He can't hear super soup, you know. He can't hear the squeak of a whale somewhere in the Antarctic. But, you know, well, he does have things that we can't do, but it was basically just to pull it up to what was, you know, available to, to be able to see in color. So for you, would it be enhancements or neurostimulations that would help a feeling of, of depression? Is there, is there something? Oh, that's yeah. Already... If they could replace that and they, see, that's the They're question. Trying. I know, and there's already deep brain stimulation, but you may get rid of the depression, but suddenly you can't recognize that that's your pet because uh -huh. they can't get it that specific. So what do you give up? I mean, would you allow someone to... Uh, the neurostimulation that's on the side of your head that zaps you with a 9-volt battery, no, that no, stuff... No, 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 no. The stuff where they put the chip in... Well, would you have that put into your I body? I would have when I was really ill. Mm -hmm. I was begging them to give me, uh, you know, um, electrotherapy. You beg for it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when I'm well now, and I'm sitting here and I'm perky, I don't really want to lose... I might lose my sense of humor. Is that worth it? I don't know. 
No. <laughs> no. no well, that's that, that's unanimous. Everybody's on the phone to your doctor now, and going, "You but don't, don't you dare touch breast fingers. enlargement or Botox or you know what I mean. Bring it on. I don't care. Well, there's a, there's a multitude of enhanced individuals. They're enhancing themselves. But I'd still be, ha you know, I'd still be me, uh -huh. right? As long as I didn't look down and right. see Mount Everest below me. So if we uploaded your mind into a computer, would that still be you? But no, I'm just saying the physical enhancements oh, to make me attractive. Uh -huh. I would have liked to know what it was like to be really beautiful. So for maybe a day, I'd like to be, you know, well, again, that would be your avatar, to see what it's like when people look at you and they're really excited. I would like to, but then I'd like to take it off the next day because uh -huh. I know really beautiful people who are miserable. Uh -huh. So I just want to taste it. That's what's so great about technology. Just let me taste it. Why don't we give you a taste of that? Everybody just look at Ruby. And imagine something imagine. quite luscious. And you want to breed with it, and yeah. But don't. You're looking at someone very specific but just don't, there on the Don't stalk me, okay? I don't want to. No stalkers, okay? But I would like to know what it feels like. I'd like to know what it feels like to be a genius. You know, that kind of brain that, that goes, at, you know, you can feel the synapses, crank, you know crickling in front of you, but then take it off the next day. That's the thing. So you want to try multiple identities, morphological freedom. But we all is... are. We all are multiple identities. Just I'd like to expand that, but then I'd like to compare it with what I am. So would you want to you be... You know how like when you take a certain drug, it's never, you know what I mean? It's, it always <laughs> tastes like... <laughs> This is being filmed you and put on the internet, but uh... You know what I mean, like no. an aspirin. It oh yeah, only, like an aspirin. <laughs> it only has Like a an certain, aspirin. Yeah. yeah, like an aspirin. It only has a certain shelf life. Uh -huh. That's how I'd like technology to be. It has a certain shelf life. And I don't get addicted. These are wishes. So it always takes you back to a state of... Me. But the, I only now like being in my state only because I've done a lot of work on me. Yep. It used to be a mess upstairs and I would have grabbed any enhancement. But, you know, I do that mindfulness thing, not bully for me, I'm not, a, but I'm sort of used to the critical thoughts. I don't expect them to go away, but they're sort of, they're my regular elevator music. Like, nobody's listening, guy doesn't know what you're talking about. I'm, they, I've sort of, I, haven't bef I hate them, but because of the mindfulness thing, I kind of know how to live among them. So in actual fact, we shouldn't just be looking at technology or science to build the future human, but perhaps mindfulness is the thing that's going to enhance us in the ways. Wow, that's a uh -oh. cyborg at the Would back. Be... Um, it's going to be mindfulness is the, the thing that might enhance us in ways that well, will make us Well, now here's the question. Can you, and mindfulness, let's be specific about the word. It's a neurological. That's why I got interested in the science of it. To be able to lower your cortisol. That's, you know, that's the big magic card is, you know, rather than getting over overstressed by your own thinking, which is the killer of the you know, 21st century. It's a way to kind of lower that. We all need stress, but we don't need to bump it up with shit. What's he thinking of me? Did I wear the right thing? How many people like me? So if something in technology someday can say, like Fitbit or something, you're about to have a heart attack, alarm you to it, and maybe you know, hit something that pulls the cortisol down, I'm buying that. Well, don't you think to a large degree technology is the thing that's causing a large degree of this anxiety? And if companies could get hold of that information on when you're feeling the most anxious, they're going to love targeting. They, they, that's new what they're shoes doing. That's what they're doing. They jack it up. That's what the news does. Everybody's out to jack up your fear. Jack up isn't a dirty word, by the way. I know. Okay. We, we, we have the British American translation. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like yeah. fanny packs. Ah, okay. Yeah. I can yeah, yeah. say that with freedom. No, no, you can smoke a fag if you want. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> It's like, you know, the, the news advertisers are all there to scare us slightly. You know that, the pr hidden persuaders. You know, if you're selling a cigarette, show a sickle or a knife. Because then when we're nervous, the hippocampus doesn't work. So the memory that, oh, it might cause cancer, that goes right down. And all you do is want to alleviate, alleviate your fear by bumping up even more fear. It's a really, and, and people understand that human psychology now, and that's how um, advertisers are selling their wares. So, so you, why would they want to calm you down? You ain't buying when yeah, you're calm. calm. When you're happy on a beach, the last thing you think about is shoes. So do you think that, <laughs> it's true. I rarely think about shoes on the beach, but do you ever think no, that- No, but you know, buy, buy. Buy, 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 yeah. buy, buy now. It's the thing that's yeah. trying to indoctrinate into you. But do you think that if the 21st century human is so, messed up and pulled in so many directions, do you think that humans fundamentally have 
a future at all, or should we just embrace oh, the inevitable I, that's a great question. apocalypse? Um, I think it's up to the individual, you know, how do you want to live your life? Like, you could say, well, there's all this food, I'm just going to eat it. And most of America's made that decision. <laughs> Rather the food inside than outside. Uh -huh. I, am, I am now a buffet, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. I've eaten my choices. So it's your choice. Do you want to let it, do you want to overdose on it? Mm -hmm. That might be fun. Or do you want to retain the essence of who you are? No, but should we it's be- a tricky one. But to a further degree, should we be comfortable with the fact that humans might eventually one day become obsolete. We might be replaced by something else. What are you going to do about it? Possibly nothing. Nothing. So on that joyous <laughs> note. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope that um, when we give it away, uh, we're, well, uh, who, who can say? I'm not, I'm not political that I fight for let's make it come, let's make it go. It's what happens. If it's, if I'm only me, I want to have a really good time. And if it means whatever my fix is, then I should be left to it. So in that case, I suppose my final question would be, what is the value of being human? What's so special about being human in the 21st century? I know this sounds a little fluffy, but having written the book with the monk and the neuroscientist, and they both, it was a marriage at the end. The one thing. An actual marriage, or is no, it? No, we all love each other. Oh, it's okay. a, what's it when it's three? It's a polyamorous uh, yes. love triangle. Yeah, it's a love triangle. So um, the, the monk kind of won. He broke us down as to say the one thing that makes humans way more superior than everything else is the fact, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm such a cynic, but it's the ability to have, there's no other word, compassion. Mm -hmm. If I can feel you, <clears throat> and you're, what's, what's going on inside, and that opens me up, that's it. It doesn't get any better. So on that joyous note, let me just end with a warning of folks who want to think about the future, because when it comes to thinking about the future, some things that may seem imminent or inevitable never actually happen. But fortunately, our ability to survive the future is not predicated on our capacity for prediction, although, and on those much more rare occasions, something remarkable comes of staring the future deep in the eyes and challenging everything that it seems to promise. I hope you feel you've done that in this session. Please join me in thanking the incredible Ruby Wax. Let's feel Thank each you. other. Thanks,